Hey guys, it's Jamie here from 3D Scan Store. And in this tutorial, I want to show you how to use our new Oldify ZBrush tool. Um, I'm using this uh, Panthro model by Niazi Serimogo. Um, and basically, what we've got here is a load of layers with different wrinkles on. <clears throat> um, and this is applied to our standard base mesh here. Um, so what we can do is we can import our model, which would be sculpted with um, our base mesh, and then we can simply apply wrinkle maps. Um, there's quite a few here to choose from. So we've got all sorts of different ones. Um, these have all been extracted from scans. Um, and as well as the wrinkle maps, we have also got some uh, lip thinner layers, just to add a sort of older kind of look to the lips. And we've also got some skin detail layers, which will add the fine details like the skin pores and sort of um, very fine wrinkles. Um, and there's three layers of those. So you can kind of choose which ones suit your character. So what I want to do is talk a little bit about how you can apply these wrinkles to your sculpt. So as with nearly all of our sort of products, you need to use our base mesh, um, which is the standard um, head base mesh, which is available with this product. It's also available for free on our scan store. You can download it from the blog. So the first thing we're going to want to do, assuming that we have our model here and we haven't actually sculpted it using our base mesh, is we're going to want to wrap our base mesh onto this model. Now I've done this multiple times in multiple different projects, so I'm just going to run through it very, very quickly. Um, and we'll be using um, RS3D's wrap, for, wrap 3, sorry. Okay, so here we are in wrap, and basically what we're going to do is use our base mesh, which has the guide object applied. Um, and we're just going to select the points uh, corresponding to the points on your sculpt. So um, as I said before, I've done this multiple times before. Um, so we're just going to sort of select the points on the guide around the lips um, and try and match them as closely as we can to the sort of same position on your sculpt. So I'm just going to fast forward this whilst I go through this process. So I'm just sort of selecting the points and corresponding to these dots that are actually on the guide. Um, I'm just trying to do it as accurately as I can and match it as closely as I can to the actual sculpt. The more accurate you do this, the better the results will be with the wrinkle maps. So that's pretty much all the um, points selected. So now what I need to do is create a, um, a polygon mask so that we won't actually be wrapping areas like the inside of the, uh, the mouth. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do a, a selection, select polygons and plug that into our base mesh. And I'm just going to select a loop around the mouth and grow that. So it expands all the way into the inside of the mouth bag and then simply shrink it back down. And now we've isolated the mouth bag. And I'm going to do the same with the eyes. Again, just selecting loops around the eyes. Oh, that's that one. And just grow that until it selects all of the inside of the eye and then shrink it back down again until we have just got the selection for the inside of the eye. These are areas that we don't want the wrapping to occur on. And we're just going to hide those selections and then select the entire object and unhide and then invert. And that means now we have just the inside of the mouth and the eyes selected. So now we're going to add an alignment tool, the wrapping, and we are going to plug our base mesh into the first one our uh, scan or sculpt into the second one, our select polygons into the mask, and our points into the point selection. And then we'll just hit wrap. And there we have a wrapped model. So you can see it's taking its time here. Um, I'll actually just speed this up. So there we have the final wrapped model. And now we're going to add a brush tool. What we're going to do with this is just fix some areas that aren't quite right. So we're going to plug the wrapping into the very first node. We're going to plug the reference into the second one, which is the sculpt. And we're going to plug the base mesh into the third one. And then we're just going to use the clone tool just to sort of morph those um, areas that haven't wrapped particularly well back into the original position um, of the base mesh. And that's what's great about this clone tool is if you use it um, rather than the relax project, what you're actually doing is using the um, underlying sculpt as a sort of reference model to um, move the slide the points over the top, but you're morphing back to the original sort of 
position or invert position of the um, the base mesh, which means everything stays in the correct place. It's a much more robust way of um, cleaning up a mesh rather than using the um, the relaxed brush. So we'll just go around sort of fixing areas that we need to. Um, this wrap wasn't actually that bad. There's not really a lot that needs needs doing on here. And I think particular areas to pay attention to are the lips and sort of chin areas where like if the wrinkles are in the wrong place, uh, it might look bad. I've um, got some weird wrapping, obviously, because Panthero's ears are quite um, extreme compared to the, the base meshes, sort of standard human ears. So I'm going to give those a bit of a smooth of the, the clone brush. Um, we can fix these in ZBrush later, sort of pull them out when we do the projection. Um, so we don't need to worry too much about them matching exactly here at the moment. Um, so that's looking pretty good now. Um, just a few little tweaks in and around the nose. Um, and the sort of nasal labial fold, um, eyebrows, and yeah, I think that's that's looking quite good. So once that's done, we just hit the accept button, and now we'll go to save our geometry out, and we'll just put that in the um, the folder where our model is. We're just going to call that um, wrapped and save. Cool. Sorry, I didn't click accept there. Okay, I'll fix that later. Now we'll just go into ZBrush and we will import our wrapped model. So just select Panthero and wrapped. And here you can see it matches now perfectly the original sculpt. And we will just check it's all in the right place. And I think what we're gonna do here is just fix these ears. So just using the move brush in ZBrush, we'll just sort of move this, these polygons into the um, the correct position for the ear so whenever we do the project uh, that's all going to work we probably could have done this in wrap as well but um, we'll just do it in zbrush because i think the tools are a little bit easier to use here and you know if we switch on um, topological here we can move the ear without moving any of the other the other sort of areas of the mesh although it is moving a little bit but you know it's not a problem and just pull that final bit there and I'm doing this relatively quickly. If you're doing this yourself, you know, you can spend a lot more time on it than I am here. <coughs> cool. So that looks good, ready for projection. So we're just going to subdivide that and um, just control D. Um, we're going to save a morph target there just in case we need to morph back to any of the original positions. And in the sub tool, we're going to hit project all. And you can see there that's started to project the, um, the mesh onto the, um, the sculpt. So that's our base mesh projected at level two onto the sculpt. And you can see we've got a few little projection errors here. So we're just going to fix those just with the standard brush. Um, I'm just going to sort of sculpt into those and I'm going to pull these polygons a little bit. Just sort of move them back to where I think they should be. Just smooth off those areas inside the nose that have gone a bit weird, a bit skew F. And maybe just sculpt into that a little bit because that needs to project into the sort of crease on the nose. So that's that looking good. And again, this other ear. And because these ears are such an extreme change from the, um, you know, the sort of shape of a normal human ear, they do need a little bit of extra work. So I'll just um, sort of fix those a little bit and then prepare it for the next, next project. Although, let me just check the inside of the mouth here. This is another area that quite often when you've got areas that are very close together, the projection kind of screws up a little bit because it's sort of projecting onto the... Um, the you know the polygons within a sort of close proximity, so we'll just go in, smooth that off, do a little bit of sculpting with a standard brush, and now we're ready to project on our next level. So we'll subdivide up to level three and do another project, and there we have the next level. So it's starting to look a lot more like Panthro now. Just fix again some little areas within the ear there that have just gone a little bit strange. And I'm just going to continue to do this uh, going up the levels of projection to um, subdivision level five. So I'm just going to fast forward through that. Okay, so I'm just going through doing the same thing. Just um, did a few little projections, a few little sculpt fixes, and then projecting all the way up to subdivision level five. Now what I'm going to do is apply the guide mesh, or the guide map that's in the folder so we can see that the guide on the base mesh matches all the features on Panthero's face, the nasal labial fold and the lips and around the chin. And this means that the um, wrinkle maps are all going to work perfectly on the, um, on the, on the mesh now. So what we're going to do is export Panthero level five. 
So we'll just export the um, the highest subdivision level that we've got. And um, the reason we're doing that is because we want to keep all these nice sculpt sculptural details that are in the mesh. Um, and once that's exported, we are going to load our Oldify tool. Okay, so that's still going. Okay, so now we'll load tool, we'll load up our Oldify. And we'll see when this loads, it loads up with the uh, base mesh. So here we have the standard base mesh um, with all the layers, all the wrinkle layers that I showed you at the beginning. So if we switch one of these on, you can see the wrinkles being applied to the base mesh. So there's quite a few of these and you know, you can apply them, do the sliders to set the intensity of the wrinkles. Um, and these all work on the base mesh and the base mesh in itself, you know, you can just create characters out of this. But what we want to do is import our panthro. So we'll just, imp using the import layer, just turn it up to one and turn on recording and then import our panthro level five object, making sure that we've got our mesh set to level five, which I didn't do here, I had it set to six. So let's just turn the subdivision down to level five and import our panthro model. And that'll import, and there we have it. And then we'll just stick the subdivision back up to level six. So we actually have sub six subdivision levels in the base mesh, and that's so that we can um, apply the high frequency details. And now if we just turn on the layers, you can see that the wrinkles will be applied to our Panthro model. And you can go through these and pick whichever one you want, uh, whichever one looks best. Um, it's a fairly simple process, just turn the slider up. And you can sort of try and like look to have a character very, very quickly. Well, an older character anyway. I mean, this is great because you could, you know, you can sculpt a character young and then you can quite easily add age or create variations. Um, and we've got lots of different wrinkles. Some are more subtle than others. Um, you know, you can see there's some areas here on the chin. And this is because this uh, character or this wrinkle map had quite a big sort of kind of wattle area under the chin. So all we need to do to fix that is just switch on recording on the layer just drop back down to a lower subdivision level and just sort of using the move tool, <clears throat> we can move that back to match our character. And really under the chin is the only area that actually requires some work with some of these characters, but it depends entirely on your sculpt and you know how much that sort of deviates from the, you know, the, um, the sort of wattle that might be on the, um, on the, the wrinkle maps. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how it works. Um, it's very, very simple. Um, as long, so as long as you use our base mesh and our um, guide to either wrap or sculpt your model, all these wrinkles will work perfectly on, on any model that you create, any character. So I'm just playing around here, just looking for something that might might look good. I quite like this one, it looks quite good. So I'm just going to turn the um, intensity down a little bit. It's got a bit of a problem under the chin there, so I'm just going to turn it up to one and hit record on the layer and then just drop down the layer levels back down to one and just sort of fix that area. Just sort of move it in a little bit <clears throat> and then just kind of pull that sort of loose skin out of the way. Just make it look good for Panthro. There we go, that looks quite nice. And that's literally all it takes just to make that into an old character. So I'll just adjust the um, intensity a bit, 0 0.8, something like that, I think might look quite nice. And then we're going to go down to these skin layers, and this will add high frequency, high detail skin pores and wrinkles to your model, which will just really sort of help to, to sell the model. Um, so I'm going to use skin layer three, I think, because it's kind of, that's sort of the oldest one. Um, so I think that fills in a lot of the sort of lower detail areas that are on the wrinkle map. The wrinkle maps are really medium frequency, medium detail sort of layer. Um, but you can see here the um, the skin details are separate to the um, wrinkles, so you can apply another set of wrinkles and still keep the the skin details there. And the, the skin details are the reason why we have six subdivision levels in this model, so we can get a nice sort of high level sort of displacement on the mesh. Just having a little fix of that wattle area again, just on a different set of wrinkles. And you can um, blend these um, details together, which I'm going to show in the um, 
in the next video there's a really you know easy way to sort of blend these together to create really unique um kind of sort of uh, wrinkle maps and facial details and i'm just sort of fixing this just on a few of them just to see what looks best this one has a really really wrinkly neck it's like the skin's kind of hanging off him probably be quite good for like a sort of zombie character or something like that um, but i think that's a bit too intense perhaps but you know it could work on on different character or you could you know blend this area with a you know different part and um, but again yeah, i'll go into that into in another tutorial okay so here we have our final wrinkly old panther and um, just do some little close-up shots so you can kind of see we've got all nice sort of the skin detail there so if we switch that off you can see you can see what a difference it makes so we've got the sort of medium frequency wrinkles there switch on the skin turn it up a little bit if you want and then we've suddenly got like a high detail model lots of nice wrinkles and folds So in the next video, I will show you how to actually combine these maps to create um, like a unique face. It isn't just, you know, one of the single sort of wrinkle maps applied. So if you have any questions, please just um, put it in the comments, either on YouTube or on the blog, um, and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much.